Hello everyone and welcome back to my devlog series, where I'm making a survival game about a man who came into consciousness in the middle of a forest with no memory of the past and no other choice than to fix a broken train to find food, shelter and a sign of life. For a long period of time I've been delaying the moment I would change these ugly tree placeholders to actual trees and knowing how much you guys like visual changes I spent the last 2 weeks on it and created a giant forest for the game. This wasn't an easy task though and I had millions of problems throughout the process so prepare yourselves we're gonna fucking learn something in this devlog. Now, if you are not new to this channel, you know how much I hate using third-party assets for my games and instead try to make everything myself to make my life even more difficult than it is right now, and making trees was not an exception. So I saw this as a great opportunity to improve my Blender skills and started researching how to make trees in Blender. Surprisingly, Blender has a great add-on for creating trees and some cool presets of different types of trees. It allows you to create very complex shapes and can even generate lots of leaves in couple of steps. But nothing comes that easy and is as you can imagine, these models are completely not suitable for a game because of their immense polycon. I mean, you can still use them if you have like one of these trees in your game and you are not looking at it, but in my case I'm planning to have hundreds of those. So goodbye easy leaves, we're gonna take a different approach. I made a simple tree base with no branches and leaves and instead made a separate branch that we are going to duplicate and place on the tree. For the leaves we are going to use simple planes on which I just project the texture of the leaf and save us thousands of vertices, but as you can see for now they don't look too convincing. The problem can be partially solved by adding a bit of geometry to the plane and displacing the vertices to give them a little depth. I then placed the leaves on the branch and it's actually starting to look good when stacked on each other, and this is how the tree looks like with a lot of branches. I was happy with how the first attempt looked in Blender, so I thought it's time to add the tree to the game, and that's where the problems appeared. See how the textures look in Blender, no stretches, no seams, and this is what I got in the game. Now this problem occurred because I missed one very important step before importing the model to the game, which is UV unwrapping. To put it simple, UV unwrapping tells how the texture should sit on the model that you made. It's actually all the knowledge I have about UV unwrapping for now, I avoided learning it for a long time, so it's a perfect time to get familiar with this topic. To be honest, I've spent much more time on this part than I initially thought I would. Unwrapping itself was an easy process, but I spent too much time trying to get rid of this part where the texture don't align on the tree. Turns out out the problem was in the texture itself, as it was not seamless in the first place. So I made a copy of one side of the texture and blended it with the rest of the image on the other side. And with that simple move we have perfect textures on the tree. It's not looking too bad, but I know I can do better by adding a variety to the branches and leaves and also changing this texture to a better one. Now you might think that I'll simply go over the same process one more time, but bear with me cause the problems that occurred during the second attempt taught me so much about optimizing my game. And if you are also making one you'll find them very useful to boost the performance of your game. The first problem I wanted to fix was the leaves appearing too white. They are covered in snow, but nevertheless the individual branches must be visible. So I started with picking up a new texture and painting it with different colors to give some variation. The branches were also looking too pointy, so I added a bunch of curves and also made 6 branch variations. By combining those two, the new branches look much better, and the repetition is barely noticeable in the final model. I then spent some time on fixing the UVs of every Every single branch and after placing the branches on the tree we are actually ready to put the new trees into the game. Or that's what I thought before changing the trees in the game to the ones we just made and crushed the entire performance of my game. For some reason the new trees were not performant at all and the game was running barely on 40 fps. So let's talk a little about optimization. The first thing most of you are probably familiar with is LOD group. Basically the trees that are far from the player do not have to be as detailed as the trees that are close. So for the trees far from us we can have different models with even lower poly count. I made two more versions of the tree with medium and low poly counts, and even though that boosted the performance a little, this was not the main cause of the problem. There was something I unintentionally did right with the first model which I didn't do this time, and with a little bit of research I eventually found the problem. As you remember, the first tree was using one texture for painting all the leaves, so the whole model consisted of one material for the tree base and another one for the leaves. The new one consists of one material for the base, one 
one for the branches and four materials for the leaves, adding up to six materials per tree. And to understand why this is a problem, we have to look at a metric in statistics panel called batching. Batching is a draw call to the graphics card to render and draw the objects on our scene. And as you can guess, the more materials an object has, the more calls Unity has to do to render a particular object. So in our first tree, we had to do two batch calls to render the whole tree, while with the new one, the number increased to six batches per tree. And considering we have hundreds of trees in the scene, the difference becomes much more noticeable, and in the end results in poor performance. So ideally our object should consist of a single mesh and a single material. But how to reduce the draw calls amount and also keep the trees with different leaf textures? The solution for this is called texture baking. I'm sure many of you use third-party models for your games, and many of them come with these strange looking images that somehow ideally wrap the mesh and change the appearance of the model. And one of the main benefits of using baked textures is that instead of having different materials for different colors of your object, you have a single material for the whole mesh. The only problem is that I have no clue how to bake textures, especially for such a difficult model. At this point you should have a clue why the trees took two weeks to make and I'm gradually starting to question my decision of making them myself. So after doing another research on texture baking and having a slight idea on how the process goes, I was finally ready to bake some leaves. I decided to start with a simple object and successfully baked my first branch with two leaves on it, then the whole branch, and finally after a lot of attempts was able to bake the whole tree, which as expected completely solved the performance issue. The baked image of the leaves looks like this and you can see every single leaf that will be wrapped on the tree. I'm honestly very happy with the result as even with one tree model, the forest doesn't seem like using the same tree, as we had a lot of branch variations that look very different when the tree is rotated. To further improve the visuals, I made another custom shader that blends two textures together and with a little displacement we have snow covering the roots of the trees. I checked the visuals during different daytimes and weathers and I'm really loving where this is going. The calm mood quickly changes to a creepy forest, making the train only safe zone for the player. I also noticed my rails were using 3 materials per object and considering how many of those rails I have in the scene, I knew it would improve the performance even more if I baked the textures for them too. And needless to say, this were the most effective performance optimizations for this particular project. And if you would like to help me out and improve the performance of this video, leaving a like and subscribing to the channel would surely do that. I then went a little further and implemented another optimization technique that you might not be familiar with, which is called Shadow Proxy. The idea is that the shadows are very expensive to render and even more expensive when the object consists of thousands of vertices. But the shadows, unlike the visuals, do not have to be that detailed. So with a shadow proxy, we create the main high poly model that will be visible for the player and another one with much lower poly count that will only cast a shadow. This increased the performance of my game by an additional 5 to 10 FPS without any visual quality loss. The next couple of days I was working on other objects in the forest. I added two more types of trees on which I will not focus much as everything was already covered by the previous tree we made. I also added these rocks, but for the moment they don't seem to blend well with the rest of the environment. The problem is that the whole forest is covered with snow, while the rocks are not. To fix this, I made another shader with a triplanar effect, which similarly to the trees blends between two textures, in this case the rock with the snow. And the cool part of this shader is that it works perfectly no matter the rotation of the rock. I like the effect a lot, so I also used it on the fallen trees. The forest is still very far from its final look, and these are just some of the elements we'll be using to make the final map. That's all for today, let me know what you think about the new forest and see you in the next one.